Hey guys, how you doing today? Uh, just on my way home from work in the evening here. It's a Friday evening. Oh, it's gonna be nice. I got the next two days off. It means I can do what I want. Oh man, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with myself. <laughs> but uh, uh, in retail, you don't really get weekends off. It's, it's pretty rare. Um, I have a wonderful manager who is trying to ensure that I get a one weekend off a month, which that's very sweet, very nice. I don't even know what to do with myself and what, what with the COVID going on, is there even anything to do, you know? Fortunately, I live down here by the beach, so I feel like there's going to be a, a lot of people on the beach. It'd be nice to walk around, see what's what, see what's going on. Ah, uh, so a piece of news I saw. Uh, this relates to the basic income. If you guys follow the channel, you know that I uh, I pretty regularly talk about the basic income, right? I tab into the movement, tab in to see what's going on. So an NDP MP, uh, how's that for a NDP MP? <laughs> so uh, one of the representatives for the New Democratic Party here in Canada uh, has forwarded a bill uh, to extend the CERB and to uh, uh, unfold it into a basic income, which every socialist uh, alive and in the world understands that not only is that a necessity for very humane and rational reasons, uh, but for just simply practical reasons. As capitalism collapses, and as it becomes more and more obvious that it's a fraudulent system that's built and predicated on a series of lies and false assumptions, we're going to need some kind of um, new system to rise from the ashes that are left behind after capitalism, uh, after capitalism's total failure becomes very too. too too cumbersome and burdensome for people to bear. And the, uh, and so something like a basic income is going to be not only like philosophically and morally correct, it's going to simply be the last possible resort of the capitalist class to maintain any semblance of systemic control within the system, that they're going to have to uh, let people who are not working buy into the system or, or be part of the system, or else those people will simply be excluded from the system and banished, which they're not going to simply roll over and die, right? They're not simply going to say, oh, okay, I guess I'll just go die. Uh, here in Canada, we still do have some semblance of a functioning democracy, uh, and we also have multiple parties. And so if the NDP stand up and actually say, we will pass a basic income, as they should, unless they're absolutely thick. And in fact, here's an NDP uh, representative putting forward that bill in Parliament. Uh, so that implies that they are absolutely supporting this legislation. And once the next election rolls around, I'm sure it'll be their uh, number one priority. It'll be the thing that they will focus on uh, completely. Which I think they should. They absolutely should focus on this because the capitalist crisis is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to accelerate. It's only going to cause larger problems, especially as the earth, who we have been completely ignoring, which we have been completely not paying any attention to whatsoever, is beginning to assert itself in more and more serious ways that uh, capitalism can't, simply can't respond to. Right? It, it simply has, there is no me mechanism in the capitalist system to respond rationally to uh, anything that the world throws at it, right? Like, disaster capitalists 
as no, no, Naomi Klein calls them, disaster capitalists. You know, I just call them sociopaths. But as these guys, when a disaster occurs, these guys race to try and exploit people as fast as they possibly can, right? And that's how, that's capitalism's response. Uh, how many corpses can I turn into dollars? That's capitalism's response, right? If it costs money to save lives, then they're not going to save lives. Very simple. You can just take a look at what's going on in the States over this COVID stuff to see exactly how uh, willing the capitalist class is uh, to exchange bodies for money. They're completely willing to do that. Uh, if you're not part of the capitalist class, you are expendable. Uh, they'll happily call you a hero. They'll happily give you hero pay, right? But, and again, that just flows into what I've said before about capitalists, which is that they're proficient liars. But, so, for, for the Americans viewing this, I'll be a bit more specific about uh, how the structure of the political system works for Canada. We have the Conservative Party, which is like your Republican Party. Um, yeah, I'd say pretty much pretty close to the Republican Party. Then we have uh, liberals, who are pretty close actually to your Democrats, right? The liberals are completely captured by corporate power. They uh, are basically about as corrupt as the conservatives are. Uh, the conservatives' position is essentially sell the society out uh, to corporate power so that maybe those corporate uh, interests will protect us, the conservatives, right? Um, the liberal position is, uh, well, let's sacrifice small, tiny things that don't really matter at all to the populace. So, like, we legalize marijuana here in Canada. Anyone with a brain in their head realizes that's not much of a sacrifice for a corporate power. And in fact, corporate power can make money off of that. Like, so they're just going to go ahead with that. We don't have the same levels of private prisons. We don't have the same levels of reliance on a war on drugs here in Canada that the states does. Um, and so the liberals have always maintained power because they've always actually given something to the populace without actually sacrificing the gold nugget of capitalism, which is uh, uh, private ownership over everyone else, right? If you uh, are one of the owners of the society, like David Thompson, uh, you will uh, never give away the, the uh, enslavement of the populace. That's crucial to capitalism. The populace must be enslaved. Uh, and anything you can do to ensure that they will just continue working for you, right? That's the key. Anything, you will give away anything and everything so long as those people continue doing all the work and you don't have to do any of the work. That's the crucial key to capitalism. Because capitalists do nothing, they know nothing, they don't know how to do anything. They're just liars and grifters uh, who convince other people to do all the work for them. And so the liberals, uh, to maintain their own position of power, uh, run uh, a very similar grift, which is, oh, we'll convince the populace to vote for us by giving them a small, tiny, little, tiny nugget morsel that doesn't actually put any dent into corporate power whatsoever. Uh, and by pointing at the conservatives, who historically and definitely are arguing to cut services and maximize damage to the populace. Uh, so we won't do that. We'll just maintain the capitalist status quo. So you'll continue working for capitalists, but we won't kneecap you the way the conservatives will. And in fact, here's a tiny little morsel. Um, so you... Like, if, if, I'm, if, if those were my options, uh, which seems to be, like, the Republican Democratic Party options, uh, I would take to the streets, right? And I think most people in the America are beginning to see that you've got to take the streets. A music break. Yeah, music break. Mm. But here in Canada, we also have a party called the New Democratic Party. Uh, they're a third party. 
they were very popular under a fellow named Jack Layton, who could have become the Prime Minister of Canada if he had of, but he died uh, kind of prematurely in his mid to late 60s of cancer. Uh, very unfortunate, unfortunate timing too, uh, because they had actually seized power as leaders of the opposition, which means they had the second most uh, amount of votes um, in the country. So they had this little moment where they were uh, uh, second in line. And then uh, they botched it the way the NDP do because the NDP are fundamentally spineless. That's their big problem, right? They don't actually have the courage uh, or the strength to seize power. They're very good when it comes to being in the house. Like if you actually pay attention to what they do in the house, they're very strong. They're, they're very vocal. They're, they're, they really put the government's feet to the fire. They ask pertinent questions. They're very strong. Uh, but when it comes time to run a campaign, they don't know what they're doing. And it's really clear. They're, they're totally spineless. They don't, they, 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 they don't have conviction or courage. They're not willing to eviscerate their opponents. And right now, both Justin Trudeau and whoever the conservatives are going to pick should be skewered completely skewered right they're frauds at best like that's their best case scenario is that they're frauds uh but the ndp just don't have the uh, uh uh the the same level of conviction to be able to attain that kind of power and if, so of course what always happens is that the ndp are the ones who seize hold of leftist uh ideas so tommy douglas who passed uh, universal health care in Saskatchewan, which is a province in Canada. Um, first, he was the premier, which is like a governor of Canada, uh, and he passed U universal health care in Saskatchewan, very popular. Um, and so he ran federally and threatened, uh, threatened the liberals with possible the possible seizing of power because of this universal health care uh, policy and so the liberals just stole the idea and they just used it for themselves which and so that's how the NDP seemed to operate they never seize power because the only time that they could ever actually seize power is if the liberals don't do the thing that liberals do which is take the leftist ideas that their opponents come forward with and use them and, and, and move forward with them on their own behalf. Um, and it's very important that the liberals actually do this because the worst case scenario for corporate capitalism and for capitalism generally would be a socialist or a communist or some kind of left leftist to actually get into power and uh, actually start going after capitalists for their fraudulent behavior. Uh, which I would be totally in favor of. And so it's much better to cede, uh, to, to take the loss and accept a policy that doesn't work for corporate capitalists, i.e. sociopaths, but ensures that the sociopaths won't be thrown into prison, which is what I argue for, which is what I think should happen, is that all of these capitalists should be tried and thrown in prison uh, for their many crimes. The, uh, and I think the same thing is probably going to happen with the basic income here in Canada, that the NDP is going to start fighting in favor of a basic income, which is a, a very popular uh, policy here in Canada. Some polls are, are having it pulled at 60%, some are as high as 70 to 80% support for basic income. There are no polls that show it below 50%. That means it's a winning policy. That means that if you are in the NDP or if you are in the Green Party and you are supporting a basic income, you are speaking to the majority. You are in the winning party. You are in the winning policy. And so uh, as we get close... And how it works here in Canada, everyone ignores uh, politics until uh, the election, right? Right? So, like, every so often we get, like, oh, there's a scandal, there's this, this, that. But people are living their lives, right? They don't have the energy. They're exhausted. This COVID stuff has exhausted them. They're not paying attention. Who has the time, right? 
I actively go out of my way to pay attention and I don't have enough time, right? I feel like when I was in quarantine, I had just enough time to actually uh, pay attention to what was going on in the news and then comment on it, right? And so that became like my full-time activity. That's what I was doing. And uh, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort. And so there's a reason why people want there to be journalists. And there's a reason why people want there to be a profession of people who are doing this to distill it down to simple kind of things. But journalism no longer exists. And so idiots like me uh, have had to pick up the mantle, right? That's why you have guys like Jimmy Dore in the United States who are actual journalists and actually doing the work of journalism while the propagandists pretend uh, as though they are actually doing that work, but they're not, right? Like if you're on CNN, Fox, any of those places, like any of those places, you're not a journalist. You're, you're a hack propagandist at best, at best. Uh, so the, um, so what I fully expect to see here in Canada is I fully expect uh, once the election comes in and starts ramping up, uh, people start paying attention. You're going to see, oh, the NDP in favor of a basic income. What about you, liberals? You in favor of a basic income? No? Oh, and so the liberals will just collapse. Their support will collapse. And the conservatives, who have basically capped their support, because you can only stand up and say, we're going to decimate the country so often before people start realizing, oh, that's bad. Um... And the kind of fascist grift that they're beginning to run now, where they're uh, uh, happily blaming immigrants and happily, happily uh, uh, saying things like, uh, they've got a leader, a, a fellow, Der Derek Sloan, who has said very fascist things, who has said that if you are anti-fascist, we're going to come after you. So, like, if you're against anti-fascism, what are you? Mm -hmm. And the and so what's pretty likely in my view is that the liberals are just going to preempt all of this right that they are going to kick off the election by announcing their intention if elected to pass a basic income right to do what the NDP and the Green Party has been saying they should do uh, all along, what I've been saying they should do all along, uh, which is uh, fold the Serb into a basic income. And this is to their benefit for a lot of reasons. Like, they get to control what a basic income looks like. They get to quell their base's concerns, right? Like, they get to pretend as though they have addressed the issue. And actually, if they're deft politicians, uh, uh, and they are because they work with the sociopaths, the, uh, they will likely do the very, 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 very bare minimum uh, in order to claim that they've actually passed a basic income, when in reality what they have done is uh, obfuscate the actual issue and they have not, they will not actually pass something that looks like a basic income at all. It'll likely be means tested. It'll likely have uh, all kinds of little hanging things on it. Uh, but it will be enough so that the people who are not paying attention will just, you know, gullibly scoop it up, right? And uh, the media, of course, will just call it a basic income uncritically because they're not media, they're propaganda uh, who work on behalf of the corporate class and the capitalist class, uh, and they'll just dish it out and everybody will believe that what the liberals are, are putting on the table is a basic income uh, because they'll steal the title, but they won't actually deliver the goods. Um, and, I mean, my opinion is straight up, we should just stop believing them. Like, they said that they would do electoral reform, and they didn't. Like, why would we believe these liars? I have no reason... I don't think anyone should vote liberal. Like, I just don't think they should. I, I am actually of the opinion that what we should do is we should uh, completely decimate the liberals, uh, get them out of the political... Uh, uh, get them out of the political conversation. And if that means we have to eat a little bit of time with the conservatives, I think that that's fine. Uh, this is really where I'm landing on this, is that it's the same way I feel about 
the Trump-Biden election in the states is that uh, no one should vote for Biden. Should just let Trump have four more years. And the reason for that is that uh, destroying the Democratic Party, just like destroying the Liberal Party here in Canada, means that you are destroying a tool of corporate capitalism, right? If you put Biden in, that doesn't destroy the Republican Party, right? It just gets rid of this goofy Trump guy, right? Who gives a fuck about him? Nobody should give a fuck about him, right? The corporate capitalists don't. He's done good work for them, right? And, and ousting him doesn't achieve anything. Ousting him and putting in Biden achieves nothing, right? The corporate capitalists don't care about that transition at all. Uh, it's strictly for optics uh, so that they can, and in fact, it's actually to their benefit because then they can pretend that things are improving when they are very much not. Um, and by uh, uh, going, giving Trump four more years, it will completely destroy the Democratic Party. Uh, the Democratic Party cannot survive that. Uh, it will rip it apart. Absolutely, it will absolutely rip it apart and reveal it as completely empty and completely fraudulent and completely without uh, uh, any power or authority, uh, uh, which I think it absolutely needs to needs to happen. And through that process, it will remove a tool from corporate cap the clutch of corporate capitalism. And so very much how I feel about uh, the decimation of the Democratic Party in uh, the states, I think the same thing should happen to the liberals. And we've done that before here in Canada. And it's always the same story, right? Uh, uh, we start by saying uh, liberals get a majority, right? That means that they get to do what they want, right? This is typical. And then very steadily they start to lose power election by election until finally they're in a minority. And if you're a liberal in a minority government, that is fundamentally Canada saying, uh, you're on your last leg. We will get rid of you. Uh, and we did exactly that with, uh, we had Jean Chrétien, and Jean Chrétien is like a, 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 like a, a large liberal figure. He's, he's in Can Canadian history. I won't go into it, but like his signature is on our Charter of Rights and Freedom. Like he's, he's a very important figure in Canadian history. And so he had a majority government for a long time that was really unopposed for a long, long time. And then Paul Martin came in and power started to wane. They got a minority government. And then they tried to do this Ignatieff thing. There was even a fellow, there was another fellow in there, but they just kept waning. And Canadians were like, come on, guys, come on. What's the next idea? What's the next thing? And they just refused. They just sold out to corporate power until eventually Canadians went, well, if you're just sellouts, if you're just sellouts to corporate power, then we'll just let the conservatives run the show for a moment. Well, let's see how you like that. And then the conservatives seized power for uh, a term under Stephen Harper, uh, which was the disaster that everyone thought it was going to be. And then, uh, and then the liberals put forward Justin Trudeau, who was the son of Pierre Elliott Trudeau, which was a very popular prime minister through the 70s uh, and uh, early 80s. And then... Uh, uh, and then the liberals ousted these hated conservatives because they're just despicable. They are. They're just despicable. And the uh, uh, and so the liberals got their ma majority and basically instantly revealed themselves as frauds. Uh, sure, they legalized marijuana in like the softest possible way possible. Uh, didn't pardon anybody, didn't actually do anything progressive. They literally said, okay, you can smoke that plant, we won't put you in prison. Uh, which is like, oh, okay. Like, that's a one-liner that they just passed through the house, no problem. Uh, but when it came to the hard work of, like, electoral reform, when it came to any kind of difficult political work, they completely bailed on it. Uh, almost instantly. Like, almost instantly. And so the next term, they be, got into a minority government situation, which means that they actually have to... Uh, if you're a, uh, an American, you might not be familiar with this at all, but it is possible for a government to get the most amount of votes, but not enough votes to be considered a majority holder of the House. So you actually have to work with the other parties to pass legislation, uh, which actually gives a lot of power to the NDP, who hold enough seats to get legislation through 
with the Liberal Party, uh, but not enough to do anything by themselves. And so this forces the Liberals to concede uh, on NDP points, or the NDP will not pass the legislation that they put forward. And that's actually very dangerous in Canadian politics, because if a bill is put forward in a minority government and it doesn't pass, that can actually trigger a whole new election uh, and cause a whole slew of problems for all political parties. Nobody actually wants to see it happen because uh, it's dangerous, because Canadians are fickle. We don't pay attention to politics until it's an election, and typically if elections are called early, uh, uh, if someone is... Uh, we don't like it when elections are called early, unless there's like obvious corruption or obvious kind of like, yes, we all must take to the polls. Um, but if it's like political gamesmanship, if it's clearly like just a pissing match, uh, it, it typically doesn't go the way that, you, that, uh, that the people in diminished p positions of power want it to go. Like here in Ontario, we had exactly that situation where the Liberals uh, were in a minority government situation with the NDP, and the NDP decided to call an early election, and then the Liberals just got a majority government. And so the NDP became meaningless. Um, which just tells you about the weakness of Andrea Horrath as a leader. But I won't get into her. The, uh, um, so if a basic income is to happen here in Canada, I suspect it will happen because during the election, the Liberals will steal the idea for themselves uh, because they understand how popular it is and it's too dangerous to allow an NDP party to pound the pulpit on a basic income while the Liberals pretend like they can't pass a basic income themselves. Uh, at this stage in the game, uh, I think that if you are against a basic income, it is because you are either A, ignorant about how it works, uh, which... I, that's not a wrong position. I think that's fine. Uh, it's fine to be ignorant on things, but it, uh, in, uh, unless you're act like if you're actively ignorant, go fuck yourself. But if you just don't know, well, that's easy. We can just talk about it, and you'll 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 come around. Um, but you could also just be evil, right? So there's that. Uh, and so I suspect Canada will get a basic income. Uh, it will be the chintziest, least, most ineffectual thing, piece of legislation that has ever been passed through the House. But it will be a start. Uh, and once any politician sees the benefits that a basic income will confer to the populace, then you just need to start ratcheting it up. There is even, uh, I know that there's groups in the basic income that actually argue in favor of this, that they want to see a basic income get passed at a very low level initially. Like, I'm talking like 50 bucks. Like, they, they want a basic income that is like almost nothing to get passed through the house because they believe that once it's passed through the house, it'll be very easy to just incrementally keep increasing it and keep increasing it and keep increasing it uh, over time. And so, uh, I suspect that by the time I'm dead, <laughs> we might actually have uh, something that looks like a basic income to uh, pry power away from the capitalist class. That's what the capitalists are most afraid of. They're most afraid of the basic income prying power away from them. Uh, and they should be afraid of that, because that's the intention. Uh, capitalists are lying frauds. Uh, they should have no power. We should take their assets away from them and throw them in jail. Uh, so... If they, uh, uh, if they have to uh, improve wages because now they have to negotiate this basic income thing, they should consider themselves very lucky and they should shut their mouths because we're doing all their work for them while they sit on their ass and do nothing. Yeah. I'm going to go inside, play with my puppy, have a drink, enjoy my evening off, and then enjoy my day off. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well out there. I, I hope you're having a good time. Um, I really do, man. Like, these are troubled times. These are troubled and difficult times. And I know for myself, it'd be so easy for me to be in a very dark place with what's happening in the world. And I just, um, 
I just hope you're able to have some laughs, spend some time with some friends if you can. God help you if you can. Yeah. If you've made it to the end here, uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, not not because I'm trying to really build anything here, but just because it makes me feel good. <laughs> if you want to make somebody feel good right now, give it a like, give it a share, give it a subscribe. It really it, it helps my mental health. It makes me feel nice. All right, guys. I hope you're doing well out there. I hope everything uh, is treating you well. Good luck.